What would happen if we turned on the water one day and nothing came out? Let's talk about it. Hi, I'm Guy and welcome to The Science Behind. In this episode, we're going to look at water saving and why it's so important. Did you know that if we carry on with our current usage, in 50 years time, we won't have enough water to meet the demand? It's crazy to think, isn't it? But only 1.2% of the world's water can be used for drinking. And that's why I'm going on a road trip to find out about how we check the reservoir levels and what we can do to help save water. Let's go. Alright Tom. Afternoon Guy. How are you doing? I'm good thanks mate, you? Yeah, great thanks. So Tom, thanks for meeting me today here at Thrust Cross. Pleasure Guy. It's a good day for it, haven't we? It's beautiful, yeah. Yeah, it's lovely. So I always refer to you as a reservoir man, but what actually is your role? Well basically Guy, I'm a resource engineer for the raw water management side uh, and I look after the reservoirs, uh, river pumping stations and raw water transmission mains. Wow, so that kind of plays with what I've been wanting to kind of look into, which is all about how warm weather is affecting our water resources, I guess. Yeah. So what are you going to show me today then? Uh, well, let's go down to uh, Thrust Cross and go and check the level. Excellent, let's go do it. So Tom, how do we check the reservoir levels? Well, Guy, the reservoirs are measured from the top water level down. Uh, this is because the reservoirs are cone-shaped, uh, and this gives us a much more accurate reading of the volume of water. So Tom, why do we check reservoir levels? We check reservoir levels because this gives us an accurate figure of raw water stocks across the region. How do you know when an area needs water? Well Guy, one of our ways of working is the RAP system, which stands for the Water Resources Allocation Plan. Uh, this was implemented in 1996 following the very dry summer of 1995. So when it is lower, what do you do? Well, one of the things we can do is abstract more raw water from rivers uh, during the summertime. This enables us to maximise our raw water stocks in reservoirs during the winter. So how do you move the water around? We have a raw water transmission grid network, which we call the Pennine Spine. Uh, again, this enables us to transfer water right across Yorkshire. Uh, for example, we can abstract up to 300 megalitres of water a day from the River Ouse in York, which we can then send on to Leeds, Leeds on to Bradford, and then from Bradford on to Halifax and Huddersfield. So one of the things I've been thinking about is, have you noticed the change in weather patterns? We have, uh, yes, the last three to four years have seen uh, very low rainfall in the March and April period. So Tom, thanks for showing me around Thrust Cross. It's been a pleasure, Guy. Whereabouts are you heading to now? So I'm going to go to the River Ouse to find out about water abstraction at a pumping station. Very good. Enjoy your day. Thank you, you too. See you, Tom. So I've come to one of our pumping stations on the River Ouse and we've got science behind Hall of Famer Granville with me. Hi Granville. Guy, how are you doing? You alright? Yeah, good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm not too bad, thanks. So what are we going to look at today, Granville? Well, we've come out today to one of our pumping stations um, on the River Ouse, like you said in your introduction there, um, to learn a little bit more about why we abstract water from rivers and how we balance that against some of the other sources of water that we've got in our region. Excellent, and I guess, why is it important that we save water? Well, I think it's really important that we recognise that all of the water that we use, whether it's coming from a pumping station like this, or from some of our reservoirs in the upland, or indeed from our groundwater sources, all of that water is coming out of the environment, and we need to make sure that we kind of respect it as such, mm. that we understand that, um, you know, we, we sort of use that water wisely when we do use it. We also, we're here at this pumping station, you might be able to hear the background noise, an awful lot of energy goes into pumping water and treating water out into supply. So yeah. it's really important that we take really good care of it. Excellent, let's go have a look. So Granville, why do we collect water from other sources? 
Well, um, in Yorkshire, about 45% of the water we put into supply comes from our reservoirs. Right. And about 22% comes from groundwater. And the remaining one third, about 33%, comes from river abstractions like this one. Oh, wow. And by having a group of different sources like that, it's one of the reasons why we're able to kind of make our water resources and our water supplies quite resilient. So we'll get a situation, you know, for even for example, this year in 2022, where the reservoirs are quite low right now. Yeah. But what we've been able to do is start using less water from the reservoirs by pumping more water out of rivers. Oh, okay. So when the reservoirs get a bit low, we'll use more rivers. When the reservoirs come back again, we can stop using the rivers quite so much. So we're balancing different sources that have got different levels of risk that's one of the reasons why we've got the grid system that allows us to move that water around the region. Right, I see. So I've been learning a lot about how we abstract from rivers and streams. How do we make sure that this doesn't harm the environment? Well, so all of our abstractions, whether they're river sources like this one or at the reservoirs up in the hills or our groundwater sources, are governed by what, what are called abstraction licences. So an abstraction licence is basically almost, if you like, a bit of a contract between Yorkshire Water and the Environment Agency that tells us what we're allowed to take depending on how much water is available. Okay. So for a river source like this, um, the flow in the river is measured in different flow bands and the higher the river is, the more water we're entitled to. By then as the river level drops, we can't take quite so much and obviously that's all about making sure there's still enough water left in the river to help protect the environment. So one of the things that my team does quite a lot of work with the Environment Agency through our five yearly funding cycles is to look at all of our abstractions and to understand latest environmental information, maybe the potential impacts of climate change and stuff like that, and make sure that our abstraction licences, in agreement with the Environment Agency, are fit for protecting the environment whilst also providing us with what we need for drinking water. So if we carry on as we are, what will happen to our water resource? Well, we know, you know, from the modelling that we do um, and the data that we use from the likes of the Met Office and the UK Climate Impact Projections that, you know, going into the future, there's going to be a massive potential impact of climate change on water resources. And so we need to be planning to understand that and to plan to do something about it in terms of the investments that we make. So we know, for example, going forward that we are likely to have um, hotter and drier summers and we're more likely to have milder and wetter winters. We need to understand what that means for the balance of water resources across all of our different supplies, what that could mean for future risk and how we're going to maintain those supplies into the future with climate change but also again making sure the environment has enough um, water left in it to, to stay healthy as well. So Granville, I know I've asked this question to you before, but why don't we build more reservoirs? Well, theoretically, Guy, we could build new reservoirs, but they're extremely expensive to build. Um, they're very large structures and they have quite a large environmental impact. So we need to work out whether that's the best thing to do for securing water resources into the future. So one of the things that my team does at Yorkshire Water is produce what we call a water resources management plan. And that has to look at least 25 years ahead, looking at all of the pressures like climate change, population growth, and all of those other kind of things that might affect the resilience of water supplies into the future. And if that's forecasting what we call a deficit, so if it looks like the demand for water might exceed the water we've got to supply, then we have to look at the options to offset that and to mitigate that risk. So a new reservoir could be one of those options, but we also have to look at other options like making best use of the resources that we've got, maybe better connecting the region together to allow us to move water to where we need it. And what we tend to find is that because reservoirs are so expensive and potentially environmentally damaging, almost always it's much more, it's much more beneficial and much more best value is, is the term we use to make uh, better use of the resources that we've got and value those resources and use them efficiently. So what can we all do to help with saving water? Well, there's all sorts of things that we can do in our own homes and around our homes and gardens to help save water. So some of it's really kind of simple stuff. Make sure you turn the tap off when you're brushing your teeth. Try and limit your shower time to no more than four minutes. Um, you know, you can do things like making sure that the uh, dishwasher's full and the washing machine's full before you set them off. So you're maximising beneficial use of the water that they are using. Um, if you've got a garden, maybe think about investing in a water butt that you can connect to your drain pipe. So when it does rain, that water butt will give you a nice big store of uh, rainwater that you can use for water in the garden instead of drinking water from your taps. Uh, maybe think about, you know, if you're washing your car, for example, use a, use a bucket and a sponge rather than using your hose pipe. 
Um, if you have got a garden and you've got some grass, you notice it going a little bit brown in the sunshine, don't worry about that, it'll be fine. As soon as it rains, it'll come back again. And actually, by not watering that grass, you're helping it be more resilient to drought into the future because the roots will go deeper looking for the water. Whereas if you, hose, if you use a hose pipe on it, you'll just get a load of water on the top. It's dead easy for the grass to find water, so we won't have to go looking for it. Perfect, right. Thanks, Ronville. No worries, guys. Cheers. That was the science behind water saving. I hope you enjoyed the video and a big thank you to Tom and Granville for showing me around and explaining to me all about why water saving is so important. It was a good day, it was also a warm day, um, but it was good to go to Thrust Cross again and also to see the River Ooze and learn a bit about water abstraction. And if you've got any thoughts or ideas about water saving, let us know in the comments below. And if you've got any questions, we'll do our best to answer them. And don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, put those notifications on so you don't miss when a video comes out. And until the next one, I'll see you later. Bye.